taken from her parents, pulled into the shadows of society and forced into a life of domestic slavery and abuse. This is one girl's story. It was non-stop. The only time I got a rest would be when it was time for bed. She was obsessed with the bathroom. I had to clean it two or three times a day, every day. Trafficked into the UK at the age of 12, school wasn't an option. Seclusion, coercion and oppression was all she had. There was no talking to the neighbours. She especially emphasised that. She said if I did say something, they would send me back to Nigeria. In all, the cycle of torture lasted six years before she managed to run away. Not every child victim is fortunate enough to escape traffickers and find a place of safety. Many go missing along the way or are re-trafficked back into the hands of criminals. For those who do escape, they're still extremely vulnerable. You've got to remember these are children who are traumatised. Many have been abused. Now, what we found is even when children make it into the care system under the protection of the authorities and the supervision of carers, they're still going missing at an alarming rate. One in three trafficked children went missing from local authority care in England in 2020, a total of 378 trafficked children that year. That's up from 284 in 2018, a rise of 34%. In London, numbers have gone up too. 54 children went missing in 2018. In 2020, that number rose to 88. We have to find out, is it a pull factor or is it a push factor? Like, are they running to something or from something? Um, and certainly, if you don't feel safe, that is a key reason why you might then decide to go. Um, and certainly if you don't feel, or if you feel that you're in danger and nobody's listening to you um, and you, you don't feel believed, um, you have a sense of distress, then, then that, that might to you be a very valid um, and rational response to your situation. So I asked this young man who was trafficked into the country when he was 12. I have an idea why they go missing. Some carers don't actually care. They just care about what they receive from the government and the allowance. And it feels like they're working for the government, not for us. So imagine you're a trafficking victim. You just want to move or go missing. And I know people who can't live on what the government gives them. They get paid more to work for the trafficker, so they go there. John has been fostering children for more than 30 years. Six years ago, he fostered his first child victim of trafficking, then his second. Both Albanian boys, both trafficked into the country on the back of a lorry. Are you surprised so many people are going missing from the care system? Not at all, with seeing how, until I've worked uh, with the children that come into contact with the Home Office, I never realised how the Home Office operated, um, or how, how dismissive they are, these young people, and how little care. A youngster comes into the UK and he's interviewed for seven or eight minutes, and that seven or eight minutes uh, determines their next few years. John's second son, in the middle here, was told he had to go back to Albania when he turned 18. The family have been contesting the decision for three years now. That's why a lot of young, youngsters lose faith in the system. And it just seems wrong that somebody's life can be put on hold for three years. And there's a lot of cases you, that go to four or five years and longer. You've met young people who have gone missing from yeah. care. What do they tell you? Why have they left the system. Their choice is, is to give themselves up and be taken back to Albania. There's a fear of what will happen because um, father has debts and debts will be taken. In Albania debts are often, if they're not taken in cash, they're taken in blood. The staying is a better option than being taken back, even though they know a lot of them get picked up by the same people that brought them here. So they might get forced back into cannabis farms. They don't have an option. These people take them and they put them there. It's the only way they can survive in this country. In a statement, a government spokesperson wrote, to prevent young victims of trafficking from harm, the government has rolled out independent child trafficking guardians to all local authorities in London. And we've strengthened how all the agencies with responsibility for keeping children safe work together locally. Free from her trafficker, now a mother, 
This young woman is part of a group of trafficking survivors. They meet every month to help advise charity workers on how to improve services. Today, they're discussing the headlines. There are so many lies and negative things said about us that are untrue. People need to realise we're human. We're not here to steal their jobs. We have value. We need love and care. The hope is they can help others being exploited in this dark underworld simply for the gain of others. Frankie McCamley, BBC London.